Okay. Um, looks like I'm live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Saturdays with Steph. Uh, today, we're going to work on the wall hanging behind me. You can use it as a wall hanging table topper, make more, turn it into a table runner, um, make a whole quilt top if you want. <laughs> I think it would be great for any of those. But uh, this is what we're working on today. It's called Bashful Star, and you can grab it off my website now. The patterns up there, the cutting instructions are up there, the fabric requirements are up there. Um, it's just a really um, easy pattern. So it's not a, a very complex written pattern. Um, but if you want to follow along, I'll show you how to do it. I want to go over here to the chat and say hello to everybody. Okay, let's see who's here. Terry's here, hi there. Oh, and a little note, if you've been to my website before, especially within the last week to pick up the fabric requirements, if you go back over to get the, if you need the cutting instructions still in the pattern, you have to hit refresh. If you don't hit refresh because you guys know all those cookie things, um, it takes you back to a previous version because I just updated the project sheet um, as I had those things ready on Friday and then today. So hit refresh, re-download the PDF and you should have all the, everything you need. So, okay, uh, going back, Terry's here. Hi, Terry, Nancy Guess or Nancy Gus, sorry, Linda Parsons is here. Nancy Guess is also here. I saw the Guess Who of hers before I saw the other name. Mary's here, hi there. Um, Paula's here, hello Paula, good to have you. Wanda's here, uh, she's babysitting. Oh, that's fun, I love babysitting. Um, Christine HL is here, hi there. Um, Linda Parsons is here. Shelly Clark is here. Hey, Shelly. Tamela is here. Linda's here. Linda Foose. Karen Cox. Hey, Karen. Sweetheart Creations is here. Welcome, welcome. Jacqueline Spear. Melanie Kellerman. Pamela. Desi. Sherlock Sows, which is Lori. Paula Hoopengardner. Shelly Stewart. Hey, girl. Glad to see you. I'm glad you're okay. Shelly was one of those affected by the hurricane, so sending her lots of love. Kathy Cantu's here. Mary Holloway is here. Hello. Karen Bray is here. AJ Holbert is here. Hello. Kathleen Cook is here. Hi, Kathleen. And Dorla Dale. Hi, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me today for Saturdays with Steph. So this project takes, I did it on my own. I did the one behind me on the wall. My husband picked out those colors for him because he wanted a wall hanging for his office. It took me about an hour and a half, so I'm going to get started pretty quickly. So um, I just put Jack away because I made one little mistake in that one and had to use Jack. Hopefully I won't have to use it. <laughs> but um, I'm going to get started because this is going to take us about an hour and a half, two hours, and I don't want to keep you till like midnight. So <laughs> uh, let's see. Say hi to a few more people and I'm going to get going. Uh, Celie's here. Hi, everybody. Tracy's here. Tracy Albert and Tracy Strobel, both, hi. Valerie's here, hey Valerie, hi Leslie. Hi Patrice, and hey Ingrid, how you doing? Okay, so first we're gonna start off with um, the half square triangles. I'm gonna turn on this camera. Hopefully you guys can see me. I still haven't got the camera issue worked out, but my husband's trying to like, hi Dawn. My husband's trying to um, work on putting like a camera overhead so I can get like, down on my blocks, but right now I just have this other camera that's gonna kind of shoot this way. So hopefully you guys will be able to at least see somewhat of what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm gonna get done is I'm gonna get all my half square triangles done for the whole project. And um, so we'll start with, you're gonna take four of your background squares and two of your accent color squares, which I'm using my accent is red, my main fabric is green and my background is this white. These are little, these are little Christmas trees. I'm making mine Christmassy. So um, that's my background fabric. So take four of your background squares, um, two of your accent of the four and a half inch and draw a line corner to corner on the backside of all of those.
Oh, Lori, if you uh, decide to go, let me know and let me know what day you want might go. Hey, Kay, how you doing? Okay, so I'm gonna pair each of my four main four and a half inch squares up with a background square and then two more of the four and a half inch main with my accent color square. And we're gonna turn all these into half square triangles. So I'm just gonna start sewing. <laughs> Now these are oversized half square triangles. You guys know I like to do it that way. So um, we're gonna eventually trim these down. So don't worry about being perfect. Just gonna chain piece all of these. I'd love to know what colors you guys are using if you're making this. I want to make this wall quilt, but I can't print it off because I don't have Wi-Fi yet. Ugh. I am just amazed that you're even here, Shelly, let alone able to sew or anything like that. So I'm glad to see you. Snip these guys apart and then I'm going to go down the other side. I saw a great interview with Shelly, the creator of Acorn Magic Juice on Karen Brown's channel. Awesome. I'll have to check that out. Thanks for telling me. I haven't seen that. I do love Karen Brown. She's in my list. I just didn't have had a chance to watch a lot of her videos lately. Hi, Marie. Hi, Sharon. Oh, hi, um, Elena quilting in Romania. Hope you're doing well. I understand being busy. <laughs> Definitely. Kathleen said using red with green accents and cream. Ooh, Christmas. Yay. That's what I'm doing to you. Christine said using red, green, and white. She's also doing like a Christmassy color. Awesome. Terry said Christmassy colors. Awesome. Sounds like a lot of you are in a Christmassy mood like I am. <laughs> Now that we finished all the autumn projects, I'm really totally ready to make Christmas stuff. <laughs> Shelly, I'm happy you have a roof over your head too. Can't quilt anymore without the magic juice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I struggle to like quilt without it. Speaking of which, I don't think I have mine over here right now. I might have to excuse myself and go get some. Um, let's see. Oh, hey, Winona. Uh, I, missed, I missed your comment. Let's see. Marie said, oh, that I already read that. Tracy said, hope Yvette is getting settled and maybe pops in today. I don't know if she's going to pop in, but she's getting settled. The movers are there bringing all their things. And she was showing me them putting all the things in her sewing space. So that's a lot of fun. It's kind of nice because it gives you a fresh start and you can like 
rearrange your showing, sewing space and like go through everything. It's kind of fun, <laughs> I think. So I'm just gonna cut these apart now down the center on the line that I drew. Glad to have you here, Winona. My schedule is open as my children are adults. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, my schedule is very highly dependent now on um, my husband's schedule. Now that he got this other job, he's traveling 40 to 50% of the time. So um, yeah. And so I'll have to see what's going on for him, what day I can go up to the quilt show. Okay, I'm gonna set these guys aside for now. I'm just gonna leave them here. And um, I will press those and trim those after I've done the next step. I just don't wanna keep pressing, trimming, pressing, trimming, you know. So the next step is to make the quarter square triangles. These guys right here. Um, so I'm going to do that next. So on these, you're going to want to draw same thing. We're going to start them off as half square triangles. And then, uh, so draw a line down the center of each background fabric. And we're going to do the same thing where we sew on either side of the line. I'm gonna do these one at a time so I can show you guys. I know there might be people that have not made half square triangles or quarter square triangles before. So I'm gonna cut this down on the line, cut it apart on the line, just like we did with the others. And then open these guys up. And I'm gonna finger press this towards the darker fabric. Okay, so we have two half square triangles from that. Now I'm gonna put these two half square triangles together, right sides together. So I'm gonna put the red on top of the white and the red on top, or the white on top of the red here. So the reds should be opposite direction. And just make sure that you can feel that those seams in the center are like nice and nested together. And then draw a line corner to corner. And we're gonna do the same process, sewing a quarter inch on either side of that line. You can pin if you feel more comfortable. And then I'm gonna cut these apart again on that drawn line. Help if I open my rotary cutter. <laughs> and there you can see I have two quarter square triangles. Okay. So I'm gonna set those aside also to press once I get all these done. So I'm gonna keep making these quarter square triangles. I didn't draw the line on that one yet. Uh, I also saw the Shelly Scott interview and then went out and bought her book. Awesome. What size are these? These are these squares are all the four and a half inch squares that I'm working with right now. The three and a half inch squares for each color that has three and a half inch squares are put aside. We don't need those yet. Cutting these apart. Okay. 
Opening them to the red, pressing them towards the red. And the reason why I'm deciding to hold off on pressing all of that and um, trimming all that is because they're all getting trimmed down to the same size. We're trimming everything down to three and a half inches square. So I just figured it'd be easier to press everything all at once, trim everything all at once. Then we'll be good to go. Okay. Draw your line, your second line. And cut apart on that drawn line again. Four quarter square triangles. Ooh, that red is looking really sharp. Nope, oh, the pattern's on my website. That's it. Nowhere else. The link is in the description box down below. If you've been to my website before, within especially within the last week, and you have a computer that keeps cookies on your computer, you'll have to refresh once you get to my website and then you can re-download it and it'll have everything. Might be time for a needle change. My bobbin thread didn't catch. Do that later. Hi, Patty. Hi, Denise. Trish is here. Hello. She said, I'm cleaning up my sewing room. I know that my sojo is hiding in here somewhere and I want it back. Aw. Maybe you'll find all kinds of fun stuff that will inspire you to sew again. <laughs> I have a love hate with cleaning my sewing room because when I do, I either can't find something or I have to make it way messier before I can get it clean, <laughs> which drives me a little bit crazy, but. Okay. Mary Ann said, hi everyone, I'm late, but finally made a live for the first time in forever. Hope you're all having a great day. Oh, thanks. I 
it is a good day today. It's cool here by me. Is it cooler by you guys? Uh, let's see. Patty said, love a two-colored quilt like you're doing. Awesome. The red work quilt that you guys picked for me for my UFO, I... I really am loving, even though there's like 5 million half square triangles. I really, really love it. It's the blocks are really pretty. It's turning out nicely. Marie said, it's been very cold here in Wisconsin. Lori said, just hit 52 with the sun. Ooh, how to summer, 91. You can keep that. <laughs> Mary Ann said, it's a beautiful, warm autumn day. Uh, Kathy said, I have a hard time cleaning my sewing room because I feel like if I'm not, whoa, where'd it go? Um, picking on cleanliness and I'm wasting time when I can be sewing something, yeah. I hear ya. Uh, no, it's still hot in San Antonio. It's supposed to get cool on Monday. Can't wait. Not sewing along, but I'm thinking I will use blue and yellow for the uh, Ukrainian quilt. Awesome. Chilly and warm, or chilly and windy in Western PA. Still warm here. We are having an Indian summer warm weather in October, mostly in the 70s. Nice. Yeah, um, it's been really, really windy here. Like we could hear the wind howl like pretty much all day yesterday and part of the night last night. And the wind has died down now, but I think they said Wednesday morning, we have a possibility of flurries already. <laughs> Which can happen in October. It just doesn't happen that often. So it's a little different. Great fire pit weather. I agree. I totally agree. Actually, we were talking about that the other night that it would have been nice to, a couple of our kiddos are sick. Um, they just have colds. But um, if we were talking about it the other night, it would have been nice to have a fire pit and like have some hot cocoa and cover up with some quilts outside, but nobody was feeling well. So, okay, I got all those sewn. So now I'm going to Dude, the part that I hate the most is iron. <laughs> so I iron all these guys. And then we'll trim them all. And they all need to be trimmed if you're ahead of me, um, three and a half inches. Here in Central Coast, California, it is 66 and windy, but is great compared to 110 three weeks ago. Oh, yikes. That's way too hot. <laughs> 52 in Royal Oak, Michigan. Okay. We get into the single digits in winter, so no hurry for winter. It's supposed to be cold, but less pre precipitation, so hopefully just a dusting of snow this winter. We've had a couple of mild years for snow in our area. Um, usually this area gets a lot of snow. We haven't had a lot. And my kids are like, can it please snow? <laughs> they love to play in the snow. And they're already planning. They've got a whole plan this year of how to make like an igloo. 
<laughs> so it needs to snow a lot. The fun part, the ironing. <laughs> Takes time, but you got to do it. I can't wait to see this in the Christmas colors. My husband requested those colors behind me. It looks red on, on the video, I think, but it's orange. It's like a pumpkin-y orange and navy blue and gray. Guy colors. <laughs> I think you'll get plenty of snow over there this winter, hopefully. I don't know, we'll see. The last couple of years, we haven't had much. We'll have like, it used to be, and I don't know, maybe it's the weather changing, but it used to be we'd get pretty steady snow for a couple months. You know, it'd build up and we'd have several feet on the ground just because it built up but the last couple of years it seems like we've only gotten like one or two big snowstorms and it goes away and we don't get much else so charlie said i'm waiting for a cool down hopefully it will cool down before the holidays yeah that would be nice hi paula how you doing you made it I'm just ironing right now, Paula. Nothing super exciting. <laughs> I'll be in, oh, Bear Lake Camp. Nice. That sounds like fun. Are you going there for um, a quilt retreat, Jacqueline? Sherry says, hello, I'm crocheting a flying pig for my son. That's cool. That is so neat. I have not figured out how to crochet animals yet. Just on basic scarves and I haven't even finished a whole blanket yet. So I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, Nancy said it's 70 here in Western Kentucky, going to get down to 45 tonight. Wow. Denise said, I came in late and haven't gone over to get the pattern. What is the block going to be used for? You can use it for whatever you want. If you guys want to take the one block and make a table topper, make a wall hanging, which is what I'm making from that one is going to be for my husband for his office. I didn't put the borders on yet, so it's a little smaller than what it should be. It's going to be. Or you can just take the block and make it into a quilt top, like make several of the blocks, make a table runner, whatever you guys want. I kind of left it open. I didn't make it a specific project. I would have actually loved to turn this into a quilt top if I had time. I just don't have time right now because I've got a lot of projects going on um, and some obligations to a few other, you know, quilt shops that I'm sewing things for. So um, maybe in the future, I might though, because I really, really like this block and I think it would look nice as a whole quilt. Good morning, Janet. How are you doing? Good to see you here. Yeah, my, I love this little iron. This is the steam fast iron. Um, I know that some people have had trouble with theirs, but I don't have any trouble with mine. And I've heard people have trouble with the Olisa one and I haven't had any trouble with that one either, but this one fits in my hand better. Um, the Olisa one is a little bit hard after a while for me to grip, to grip, so. But it works just fine. It's just if you're you're ironing a lot with it, it's it gets hard for me. But that's just me. Hi Patty, how you doing? 
Diane said, I got all my fabrics cut this afternoon, but I'm a slow sewer and we'll put together tomorrow. This is not a pace for my 69 year old self. Oh, that's all right. What colors are you using though? I'd love to know. Oh, a camper handicapped children in the summer. Okay. Hi, Tina. Good to see you. I hope you have a great dinner. Hi, Karen. How you doing from Australia? Hope you're staying safe over there. I heard there's a lot of flooding in Australia. Hey, Shirley, how you doing? Glad to have you here. Shirley, are you signed up for um, Stephen's Zoom retreat next week? Paula, my my iron is a steam fast iron. I used to sell them in my shop. They've been really hard to get a hold of, so I don't have any right now. But I believe that um, like Walmart has them, so. I would check there or on Amazon, but it's just a little steam fast travel iron. It gets super hot. That's why I like it. Sorry, I missed where to get the pattern for this block. Oh, Janet, look in the description box below the video. There's a link to my website and that will take you to, if it doesn't, you should go to the Saturdays with Steph tab and in there you can get a PDF download. Shelly said, I'm cutting out the last 25 blocks of the 100 days, 100 blocks quilt in the home stretch. Awesome. That is quite the challenge and you, my friend, are the one person that I would think could do it. <laughs> hey, Nellie, how are you? Hope you're doing good today. Uh, Terry says, um, have you heard anything from Fort Worth Studios about a Christmas project in Georgia? enjoyed dark flight well i'm glad that you enjoyed dark flight i will be sewing along their next project but i can't tell you yet what it is <laughs> i'm sorry my lips are sealed for now but there will be a project <laughs> so they are working on finishing it up hopefully very soon so i can let you guys know but right now my lips are sealed can't tell you East Coast is where the flooding is. Oh, okay. Hi, Joyce. How you doing? Diane says, I'm using blue, yellow, and blue turquoise underwater flower. Ooh, that's going to be pretty. Awesome. Oh, good, Shirley. I'm glad to hear that you're signed up for that. Diane, you're going to Stephen's retreat as well. Awesome. I am too. I can't wait. I really love Steven. He's so much fun. Him and Walter just play off each other and just perfectly. And Walter reminds me of my stepfather. My stepfather is real quiet like him until he has something like, you know, when he's talking, you need to listen because there's something that important is that he's saying. <laughs> so, um, why not? I said, what are you making with these units? Are you doing a quilt while hanging table topper? How many units will you be making? Are you doing all the units in different colors? That was a lot of questions, why not? <laughs> okay, so I'm making this that I made behind me here. It's, um, you could turn it into a table topper. You can turn it into a quilt top if you wanna make multiple of them. Um, you can turn it into whatever you want. I'm making uh, wall hangings. So this one doesn't have its borders yet. This one's going in my husband's office. He requested it. He wanted something for his wall and in manly colors. And I usually don't work with manly colors. So <laughs> he picked out all the colors. Um, I got to finish it. But the one today I'm also going to make, I'm making um, red, white, and green because I wanted something Christmassy. And I'm also making it into a wall hang to hang down here in my space. 
So, yep. Is that red, a red orange in your quilt block behind you? It's actually orange. I know it looks red. Here, let me bring it closer. I know it looks red from back there. It's actually orange. These are my husband's colors. He loves like orange and blue together. And like I said, the borders, I still need to put the borders on, but that's what his is going to look like. I know it looks red from back here, but. Yep, that's the colors he picked out he wanted. And it's grunge, manly fabric. <laughs> Any news on my box coming up soon? Yes, uh, my Christmas box, it's going to be a Christmas box, not winter. So if you're not into Christmas, this won't be for you. It's definitely Christmas. We'll be on sale in my shop on, yeah, my mind just blinked, <laughs> October 31st, Halloween on October 31st. It will be in my shop for sale, but I will send out, if you're on my newsletter, I will send out, you know, newsletter or email um, and I'll post it on social media and I'll tell you guys ahead of time to, I'll remind you. Um, yeah. So. Do you put a sleeve on the back of your wall hangs? Not a sleeve. I put, um, I don't know, it's hard to explain. I put these little like side triangle pieces in the binding and then I put a pole on the back and stick them in those little and then hang it on the wall. Or I'll just use command strips. You can use those command Velcro strips, stick them on the back of your project. It does stick to fabric and then stick those to the wall. So if you don't wanna put like a bunch of nails in your wall, so yeah, I've done both. It just depends on where it's gonna hang. If it's a place that it's already got holes, then um, you know I'll, I'll do it. But if it's a new place that we don't wanna put holes, then I'll use the command strips. Probably in his office, I'll use command strips because this is smaller. So it's not gonna be heavy and um, they actually can hold a lot though. Okay, so now I'm just gonna trim down everything we've done, the half square triangles and the quarter square triangles to three and a half inches. Oh, Tracy, you're going to uh, Steven's retreat also? Awesome. Sweetheart Creation says, I'm using my scrap squares up of green, paisley, and ivory. Oh, that would be pretty. I'd really love to make this in batiks, blues, greens, woodsy like for a table topper. That would be nice. I can see that. That would be really pretty. Judy, I spent the day with Steven today. Awesome. How fun. AJ Holbert said, do you put a sleeve? Oh, you already answered that. Uh, Sherlock so said, pretty. Thank you. Hi, Kate. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Priscilla. Hi, Gidget. Good to see you all. Diane said, I can't wait for the Georgia retreat ring in the new year. Anyone else from North Carolina going? Um, yes, there is. Uh, if you guys know Nita, Nita Henderson, she's on a veg channel a lot. She doesn't really come here because she's busy on Saturdays. Um, but she's going to come. She's from North Carolina. Not anybody else that I know of right now, though. Seely said, Steph, do you have any upcoming mystery sew alongs where we can buy a kit from you like Beautiful or Pride? I'm not going to have any um, Seely this year. I'm going to have one in January after the new year, just because um, I've got a bunch of projects going on. I'm going to have my project box. There is going to be a Fort Worth Fabric Studio sew along, so I'm going to be sewing that. I am sewing the pastry shop quilts block of the month, um, and I've got some other things going on. And so... I just don't have time right now, but there will be another one. Yes. Thank you for asking, actually. I've had it designed for a while, Sealy, but um, just don't, I have, I don't have so many hours. So I know I, I do get a lot done because I so fast, but there's only so many hours to, uh, to do this so many projects and I wish I could do it right now. I just don't have the time right now, but it'll be good. It'll be, we'll finish it for spring. So hey, Marla, how you doing? Hi, Laura. How are you feeling, Laura? I hope you're feeling better, you and Paul. 
Uh, Janet said, I have a large dining table. I think it would be nice to make four blocks together in Christmas colors for the topper. Yes. Yeah, and it'll probably start um, see you later in January, like middle, maybe even late January. Give us a break from after all the Christmas. Plus, like I said, we're doing the retreats, the New Year's retreat. So I'll just be getting back from that. So maybe like around um, halfway through the month in January. Uh, Tina says, I'm doing fall colors, browns, orange, and blues. Ooh, that'd be pretty. I thought about that, Tina. I had some of those colors pulled and then I was like, eh, I've done a lot of autumn stuff already. So I changed to Christmas because I'm kind of getting excited about the Christmas season this year. No pressure. Oh, no, I'd already planned it. So I'm glad you asked. Um, it's no pressure. But yeah, I'm thinking like mid-January. That'll probably work. Uh, we're pretty sick. Just going to lay here and watch. Aw, you poor thing. I know a lot of people getting sick lately. It seems like stuff is definitely on the rise again. That word that we can't say on YouTube. <laughs> So did any of you that are watching, um, did any of you purchase any of the Cotton Cuts Advent Countdown to Christmas things like the fabric or the notions? I may have caved and gotten them. <laughs> I was happy to get them before they sold out. Is the rotary cutter available now? It has been sold out for a while. Nope, the, uh, they're still backed up. I have been bugging and bugging my, my notions rep about them. And um, no, they're, they don't even have any, usually they can give us an estimate approximately when things might come in, whether it's two weeks or a month or three months, they don't even have an approximate right now. So, they did not think that they were going to be this popular and sell out like this. Oh, thanks, Denise. Yeah, it's getting dark so early now. You have to get out there. Are you guys talking about the rotary cutter that you were too slow on? They're gonna come back. They're just, I don't know when. So I don't wanna say a date because I have no idea. I would hope it would be soon, but you know. <laughs> You're gonna enjoy watching us open those advent boxes. <laughs> Marianne said, totally caved. Oh, you guys were too slow probably to the advent boxes. Okay. Marianne caved. I did too. Denise said I ordered the Ginger Quilter Advent Box and the one from Open Gates. Okay, cool. I didn't get either of those. I got one from a quilt shop out of Canada, actually. I think it was called the Gnome Quilter or something like that. I'd never heard of it before. I was looking for something different. And then I ordered the Cotton Cats fabric, the Batiks, because I have so much regular fabric. I was like, I really, if I'm gonna get one, I'm gonna get the Batiks. So not the Batiks. I caved.
uh, both were expensive, so I won't be doing any more, said Denise. Yeah. He said, no, I couldn't get the Cotton Cuts evident box. That's not called the, yeah, I know what you mean, Kay. The advent box room or the countdown. To, I think it's called a countdown to Christmas box, but don't quote me. But yeah, the con cuts one sold out quick. I was shocked how quick it sold out. Because like, um, if you guys watch Missouri Star, they had come out and said they still had some left, even though they did pre-orders like quite a while ago. So I was surprised how fast the cotton cuts one sold out. Uh, Sarah, the one from Canada is, I'll have to look it up to tell you for sure. And I can't do that right now, but, um, something, the, no, the gnome, gnome quilter or gnome quilting company or something like that. It has gnome in it and they have an advent box and it actually wasn't too bad to ship to the U S I was surprised because when I've tried to ship things to people in Canada, it's been really expensive. So I don't know if they are a bigger shop. And so they have like a good negotiated rate, but I went ahead and got it since it wasn't too bad. And with the exchange rate for me, the price of it wasn't too bad either. So, but yeah, I think it was the gnome. I, I know I'm saying it wrong, but the gnome quilter, the quilting gnome or something like that. Uh, let's see if you get behind in the chat, charge, change your speed to 1.25. Oh yeah. Good point. Shelly. Tamala said, I couldn't get the cotton cuts advent box, not in the budget this year. We'll enjoy watching everybody else open theirs. Awesome. Janet said, I missed out the cotton cuts advent box looking for another I can get. There's all kinds of them. Um, if all the main ones that you guys have heard about are sold out, go on Etsy. Um, just go to Etsy.com, not anybody shop specific and put quilting, uh, advent calendar. Cause I found one through there too. And it was a company I'd never heard of before and there, but there's several of them out there. So check Etsy too. Um, it's okay. I just console myself by buying one of Stephanie's fall boxes off. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> uh, did you get one from the Sewers Club? The store is Owl Bee Sewing. Um, no, I don't think so. I've not heard of that one. I'll have to check that one out. The quilting gnome. Thank you, Tracy. The quilting gnome. Yes. Uh, Nancy said, Stephanie, I received your box for the fall. Love it. Have you heard from a vet? Yes. I talked about that a little bit earlier. I've heard from a vet. She is doing well. The movers are there today, moving all their things in. So yay. She's setting up her shelves and her sewing space and starting to make a plan of where to put everything. So her sewing space is really pretty. Can't wait for you guys to see it. Um, let's see. Mary said, I took the Advent Dive and got the GE Designs one this year. Oh, I didn't know she had one. That's cool. You'll have to post pictures of that one, Mary, after you get it. I'd love to see what's in it. Paula said, I should sign up for the retreat in Georgia since I will be in Georgia from December to February with my daughter. She lives close to the Atlanta area. Awesome. That would be fun. You should come on over. We're about an hour north of Atlanta where the retreat's going to be.
I'm also super, super tempted by that pastry shop quilt subscription. I really can't say enough good things about pastry shop quilt subscription. Sherry over there, that's an owner. She is a small business owner. It's just her running her shop. Um, she's online only, but she does such a good job. She writes all her own patterns for even for things, not for the box. She has a ton of like quilt kits in her shop. And most of them are her own pattern, not all of them, but most of them. And she like tries to make her own pattern for the new fabrics coming out. And I think it's really cool. She's very creative and I haven't had one box yet that I didn't like. And this last one that I just opened this week on my channel was probably my favorite. I love the pattern. So, and I've liked them all. Solar's Club ships to the U.S. from Niagara Falls, New York. I think they pay someone to drive across the border. Maybe the gnomes cross into the states where they are too. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. That's a good point. Maybe that's what they do to make it less or to make it cheaper. I live vicariously through others when it comes to admin boxes. Uh, Mary said, we'll do. It's project related. Awesome. Somebody was really smart to come up with advent boxes for cultures. They knew that we would totally buy those. <laughs> Oh, cutting all these takes forever. <laughs> Once they're done, though, we can start building this together pretty quickly. Two more. Stephen was talking about all of the different advent calendars out there. There's one for everyone. Yes, there is, Kay. I did see his thing about that, and um, I went and looked at some of the ones that he was talking about. Man, you can get one for your cats, your dogs, your kids. <laughs> For the wine drinker, the beer drink, you can get one for everything, it seems like. It started me down this rabbit hole, though, because then I went to Amazon and started looking at advent calendars over there for my kiddos. And um, my oldest son is into Legos. I found him a Lego one. I found our five-year-old one that has dinosaurs in it. He gets a, like a new little dinosaur every day. And it was really inexpensive. I was surprised how inexpensive it was. Um, and then I found one with like Hot Wheels type cars in it for our youngest little guy because he loves cars. I just haven't found anything for Sarah yet. Last year, I got her one that had a new nail polish every day and because she loves nail polish, but she has so much now. I don't want to do that again. A lot of them, if you put in like teen girl, they're like still like kind of little girly stuff like unicorns and stuff like that, which she's not into anymore. She's kind of over that. Okay. 
Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Those are all trimmed. Oh, that's the worst part. All right. Those are all three and a half inches. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay these all out and then start sewing. Grab these. Now we're going to sew each quadrant the exact same way. Um, so I'm just going to lay them all in piles. The way that they're supposed to go. or else I will make a mistake. Yes, she does bake. Yes, yes. An Advent box with crayons. That's cool. She likes to bake and she likes to draw. She loves to draw. She's very, um, very artistic, very artistic. She used to love to paint, but she's kind of over the painting now. Now her thing is, is drawing and baking. What is the brand of rotary cutter that I'm using, said jo Judy. I am using a Creative Grids rotary cutter. I love it. It's my favorite rotary cutter now. My other favorite one is the Tula Pink one. It's definitely, they're both on the pricier side, um, but I've owned like... <laughs> I've been quilts in a long time. I've owned like every rotary cutter on the market. And I will tell you that the Creative Grids one and the Tula Pink one are my two favorite. The Creative Grid ones, Grids one I like because it's heavy. And so you don't have to push as hard when you cut, um, which is great for me because I have arthritis in my hand. So it's sometimes hard for me to, to push down hard enough. Um, the Tula Pink one I like, which I don't have here right now, but I can show you guys another time if you want to see it. Although a lot of you have probably seen it. The reason I like that one, it's also weighty, but not as weighty as this one, but it fits in your hand really nicely. And it's really well balanced the weight, the weight when you hold it. So, okay. So I've got all my pieces laid out in the way that they need to be sewn together. And I'm just going to start, you know, grabbing them by a row and just put them together. So. Mm -hmm. Hi, Gwynnie. How you doing? I'll be right back. Okay. Tracy said there's an advent calendar that has DIY Christmas ornaments. That's fun. Um, another has makeup for teen girls. Oh, that's a good idea, Shelly. Shelly said, what about something with beads for Sarah? She would like that. I didn't even think about that. That or baking, like Sweetheart Creations was saying. Add that box from Crayola crayons. Crayons don't do very well in our house. Sarah's past the crayon stage and the little kids just break them and throw them all over the place. So. We definitely have crayons in our house, but it's not a huge thing. So I'm just sewing these together like one row at a time. 
Um, I'm gonna sew all the pieces for all four quadrants in the same row so I don't get the rows mixed up because I know I will otherwise. Because <laughs> I did earlier, that's why I had Jack out. I did, I did that with my husband's. Hi, Donna. How you doing? We don't spend much on Christmas. Daughters put a note with an activity in the advent calendar drawers. Things like making hot cocoa, going to see lights, watching a family movie. They do it as a family. That's awesome. Yeah, we don't do a whole lot for Christmas either, to be honest with you. We, we get them each an advent calendar. And then... Um, The kids have to make a list of something they want, something to read, something they need, and something to give away or share. And they get one of each of those things. So like they, if it's something they need, like if it's clothes and then they have to pick a book and then something that they want, like if it's a toy or... Something to give away can either be something they donate um, to a shelter or it can be something to share, like if they pick something that could be for the whole family or something like that. Uh, Kate said they have markers and pencils and drawing pads and all sorts of stuff, not just crayons. Yes. We have lots of those things. <laughs> Tracy said, Steph, there's one like that is a charm bracelet that she might like. Ooh, I'll have to check that one out. Okay, there's all my top rows put together. And do the middle row. Ah, Joyce, so you did a similar thing. Okay. It just keeps them from asking for like, you know, all toys and makes them really think about what is the one thing that I really, really want because I'm only getting one thing that's like a want. <laughs> you get the very set and every day is a different charm to add. She would love that. Hi, Billy. Uh, Shelly Clark said, kids get stockings with little stuff. They get a few toys. Adults exchange homemade gifts like jams, wooden cutting boards made from scraps. I make pillowcases and small bags. That's awesome. I think that would be a nice thing to do when my kids are older. Like homemade gifts for everybody. Thank you. 
Okay, so that's all of row two. And I'm going to do last row, row three. And then we can start putting these together. Um, Shelly said, I got a beautiful paint by number from my granddaughter last year. She did a great job. That's awesome. That's the nice gifts to have, isn't it? <laughs> I'm forever making gifts for my kids, but I find myself not waiting for a birthday or holiday just to give it to them. Yeah, I'm like that with gifts too. I'll buy things for people and then, or make something for somebody. And I'll be like, sorry, this is for your birthday six months from now because I can't wait. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, Shelly said, I don't need any more stuff. Just buy me chocolate. <laughs> That's easy. I could do that. <laughs> Uh, Judy said, sorry, I need to go. My little dog has been barking for her dinner, having so much fun watching, didn't realize dinner time has passed. Bye, have, Judy, have a good night. Thanks for coming in. Oh, hi, Kathy. Kathy's Quilt and Crafts is here, doing good today. How are you doing? Uh, oh, thank you. Kathy, Kathy said these are nice colors. Very Christmassy, I'm getting in the Christmas mood. Uh, so Terry said, I'm making a block by Donna Jordan. Oh, I love hers. I love her patterns. Free pattern rolling stone to use in my steampunk quilt. Kind of looks like a gear. Complements the theme, I think. Awesome. Am I doing Vlogmas this year? Yes, I am. I did it last year and I actually, it's a lot of work because you have to do a video a day, but I actually really enjoyed it. I, I had fun. After it's over in January, you're kind of like, oh, I'm not talking to everybody every day. <laughs> So Terry said, what happened to you? I don't need anything, just be good. Having the advent calendar from the quilted gnome and from cotton cuts, it'll give me things to open and show you guys during Vlogmas. So excited about that. And of course, we'll do some sewing stuff too. Doing good, thank you so much for asking. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, so I've got all my rows sewn together. Ooh, that does look sharp on camera. I just looked up and saw that. I like that, very nice. <sighs> for the not so fun part again is the pressing. I'm gonna press these, sew the blocks together, and then we can put this top together. That's pretty much all that's left now. Uh, 
Oh, that looks good. I was thinking maybe I should just sew them together and forget the pressing, but <laughs> now that I'm pressing them, I'm glad I am. It looks a lot better. I was gonna break a rule. Uh, Kate says it was so fun to get to know you last year. Oh, thanks. It was fun. I enjoyed doing Vlogmas last year and yeah, I'm looking forward to it again. I also have a collab coming up with um, another couple of channels. Well, the one hosting it is uh, a lady named Sherry McGill. You guys might've seen her here, or if you go to So Yeah, she's always on So Yeah's um, fabric sales. Um, her YouTube channel is called Lessons Learned, and she's a real nice lady. If you guys haven't seen her YouTube channel, you should check it out. And I um, wish I had the link for you. She and I and a couple other creators, and I don't have their names right now, um, but we're going to be doing a quilt made out of Soya's um, new fabric line, Not Your Mama's Flower Garden. And we're all doing the same pattern. We're using the fabrics from that fabric line, but we're all doing different backgrounds. We wanted to see what a quilt would look like or the difference of the, what the quilts would look like. Um, or Sherry came up with this idea, I shouldn't say we, but what the quilts would look like with different background fabrics with that fabric line. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. Oh, so Terry, you watch Sherry? Isn't she sweet? She's the sweetest lady. I really like her. Sherry went to Sophia's retreat. Yeah, she did. <laughs> Lori said, hubby just called. I told him about the quilt show in November. He said, I'm going broke, aren't I? <laughs> that sounds like something my husband would say. <laughs> That's really funny. You don't have to go broke. That's not a super big show. Um, I went last year and I really enjoyed it, but you really can get through the whole show and just the quilts and the vendors and everything in, in just a couple hours. So tell him you'll only spend half of his money, not all of it. Uh, Shelly said her kids are 40 somethings, so they don't, the, you need to be good. Doesn't work on them. <laughs> so Terry said, I like their new fabrics. They sold out immediately. They did. I couldn't believe how fast they sold out. I didn't even get any from them directly i had to order it um when sherry asked me to do what did i do oh yeah <laughs> thought i ironed them the wrong way when sherry asked me to do this challenge with her um i actually had to go on somebody else's website and find them another quilt shop because they were out of them and yeah but that's it's gonna be fun I'll let you guys know more about that when we get closer. I'm not sure exactly when we're doing it and when we're going to put the videos out, but there'll be a video on all the creators channels and I'll give you guys all the info when we get there, but it's going to be fun to see how each quilt comes out with different background fabric. Uh, Lori said, hobby doesn't care what I spend as long as the bills get paid. Awesome. It's nice when you have a husband that's like, okay with your hobby. <laughs> My husband's pretty cool about it. I was surprised because, um, I debated about 
course, I've had my long arm now for quite a while, but I debated about it for like, I don't know, maybe a year and a half. And he finally was like, just get it. <laughs> and he's usually the one who goes, don't spend money. But it seems like when it comes to quilting, he pretty much doesn't care. Like you said, as long as we can pay the bills and I'm not doing anything crazy. <laughs> which I wouldn't anyway. I would never get any big purchase without his permission. Laura said he spoils me, buys me the stuff I don't, buys me stuff I don't need. Oh. That's a big expense, but if you are going to use it to generate money, it's worth it. Yeah, I've had mine for quite a while now, so um, it's almost paid off, my long arm. But it is quite an expense. I think he lets me buy things, you know, within reason because he's not a very good gift giver. Not that I need stuff from him all the time or anything, but um, he usually forgets like my birthday, <laughs> Christmas, Mother's Day. So he pretty much is just like, do what you want within reason, you know. I was surprised today. I don't know if you guys can see it behind me. There's flowers over here. Today is sweetest day. I know that not everywhere in the country like has sweetest day but it started in cleveland ohio the american greetings company which is based here in ohio started this <laughs> secondary valentine's day go around here it's kind of a big deal but um today's sweetest day so he brought me flowers which i was really surprised i didn't think he'd even remember <laughs> i think my daughter like might have said something to him so okay now I'm going to attach this last piece uh what happened with the black sewing machine you had the black sewing machine is at Genomi um it came with a factory I thought there was something wrong with it from when I got it because it never quite works like this machine and it's pretty much the same machine just a little upgrade with um bigger bobbin and lights and all that stuff um there was always something like didn't work quite right the thread cutter didn't work quite right and things like that and one day when i was sewing with it it made like this really horrible metallic noise and i opened the bobbin thing down here and there was like a piece of metal and a screw there i think they probably were loose from the beginning like from the factory and i just didn't know it and yeah it finally came apart but it it had to be sent back to genome to get fixed so we don't really have any genome dealers right around here so i had to send it in but it'll be covered under warranty since it was, you know, a factory defect, so. Kathy said, my husband told me to slow down when I got to packages 
got packages in the mail in one day, says the man who got a cookie monster costume just to wear for his grandson. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> How adorable. Shelly said, Hub spends more than I do on hobbies, so he encourages me to not feel guilty. I'm not worried about not paying the bills now, but there's a limit to our retirement funds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lori says, I always thought sweetest day was for unmarried couples. Nope. <laughs> uh, Terry said, we love the cheese advent calendar from Aldi. Oh, that might be yummy. They have good, um, you know, if you like just the chocolate advent calendars where you get a piece of chocolate every day, they have good chocolate advent calendars too. I don't know about, about you guys, but when they release them here, like they're gone in one day. Ooh, I like these blocks, how they're turning out. You guys can see that. This one got a little wonky, so I think Jack's going to come out because I'm not happy with that. And I'm just going to keep looking at that and being not happy with it. So we're going to take this one apart. Uh, Sharon said, I bought myself a Missouri Star Quilt Company Advent Calendar. Awesome. She did a live about those the other day because they had extra to sell beyond what the pre-orders that they had sold, I guess. All right, let me fix this guy. To not like the way he was laying there. Oh, much better. Okay. Good. If Amazon, Moldy Lasagna said, if Amazon doesn't come to my house one day, they have a wellness check done on me. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. If our UPS man doesn't come for a while, when he does come, he's like, where have you guys been? <laughs> he knows me by first name. <laughs> I had to cancel mine as the bill came in while dealing with COVID. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you're doing better though. Okay, I've got those blocks all sewn. I'm just gonna press those. I'm gonna put Jack away and hope that I don't need him anymore. <laughs> now that there's not much left. So I've got all four of the quadrants done, these here. And so all I have to do now is press them and put them together with the session strips. So. Almost there. Oh, for the rows, I I pressed um, the top and bottom. I think to the right and the middle to the left, it doesn't really matter as long as you press them opposite 
um, and the blocks, press them whatever way you like. I'm pressing the, the top, I kind of, I try to let, if the block is like already trying to go one direction, I try to press that direction just because the fabric's trying to lay one way or the other. So this one seems to want to, the top row seems to want to lay towards the top and the bottom one's flipping towards the bottom. So I'm, they're going opposite directions, but that seems to be the way it wants to go, so. Mm, still dealing with the COVID. Oh, I hope you feel better soon. So many people are getting sick again. Keep hearing that. Uh, Kathleen said, my mailman commented yesterday that he hadn't delivered any fabric boxes to me lately. I replayed, just wait. Most of my subscriptions come mid to late month. Yeah. Okay, those are pressed. All right, now I'm gonna grab my sashi strips that are gonna go in between the blocks. Two of them are gonna go in between the blocks and then two of them are gonna go in the center here with the little uh, cornerstone in the middle. So I'm gonna make that first with the cornerstone and then put the strips in between the blocks. Oh, darn, you didn't get your designer mystery. I got mine, hopefully you'll get it soon. I just, I got mine, was it yesterday or the day before? I think it was the day, I think it was Thursday I got mine. I love that one, Kay, that's, I love it. Okay, now I'm gonna put these blocks together. Threads all over them. Marianne, you got yours today. Awesome. The B4, B5 is more contagious and people are sick of wearing masks. I wear one to look out the window. 
joking, but I'm pretty diligent about it. Grandkids school has had a lot of absences lately. Oh. Yeah, I've noticed uh, around here that a lot of people have started wearing masks again. Um, they hadn't for a long time, but lately they have been, because I think whatever that new variant that's going around is, like you said, pretty catchy. Make sure you orient these the right way. You sew them together. Uh, what is the designer mystery? That is a block of the month from Fat Quarter Shop. They do one every year. Last year was, I think it was fig tree last year. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure it was a fig tree fabric. Um, this year is uh, Nantucket Summer by Camille Ross Kelly. And they just take, they send you um, enough fabric to do a block each month for a year to finish like a whole quilt. And the nice thing about it is that you have a whole month to do one block. Which, you know, you would think would make it easy, but <laughs> I just finished my designer mystery from 2020, not 21, not 22, 2020, <laughs> a couple months ago. <laughs> because I didn't keep up with it, but I'm being very diligent this time and um, sewing it when it comes right away. Okay, have those pieces together. Just two of those, and now I'm gonna put it together <clears throat> with the sashing piece with the block in the center. Get this together. I always wear my mask and gloves whenever I go out. Better safe than sorry. Yeah. Mary said, Fat Quarter Shop is so generous with their fabric cuts. You have a lot left over from each month's packets. Yes. When I did the uh, 2020 designer, I've got a whole bag of fabric over there left. Same thing with the coriander, very coriander Christmas block of the month. You didn't have to buy all that from the Fat Quarter Shop, but I did originally. And there's so much fabric left over. I could do a whole nother quilt, not a whole nother one of those quilts. Um, there's not enough for that, but there's a lot left over. So I have like all these bags of fabric sitting around because I finished all these things lately that I just, I don't know what to do with because I don't, I'm not a scrap quilter and, but I don't want to just chuck it because it's enough for a whole nother quilt. So especially the, the Christmas one. There's so much fabric left over. 
but I have a whole like bag full of stuff from the 2020 mystery quilt left over too. I was hoping that Corey would come out, Corey Yoder would come out with another Christmas line that kind of went with Holly Berry so I can mix them together. Like Lella Boutique did Christmas morning last year and now she's doing Christmas Eve that's coming out in the spring and they match, the colors all match. The patterns are different, but the colors all match. So you can mix and match them. If you have any Christmas morning left over. I like when designers do that. Throw in a background to tie it together and do something like Moda blockheads or fat quarter shop houses. Hmm. Sell mystery boxes. <laughs> oh, scrap. <laughs> Uh, use the scrap from those quilts to make the quilts for your summer camp kids. Yeah, that's a good idea. Except they don't want like Christmas. And the one is, I have a ton of the Christmas that Holly Berry left. Um, but the Bloomington one would work, the 2020 mystery, because that's just floral. So yeah, that's a good idea. Speaking of Fat Quarter Shop, um, have any, any of you ever done the social lights so along before, like in other years? She's starting a new one. I think it's this Friday and I was seriously considering doing it because I saw the preview and it looks really nice. I just have never done it before. I looked at their fabric requirements and I definitely have, you know, everything I need here. So wouldn't have to purchase anything. Just get into my fabric stash. Or if you've not made it before, are you planning on doing it this year? Just curious. Uh, let's see. Shelly said, my scraps are like loaves and fishes. I swear there's more left over when I make a scrap quilt. Wow. Kathleen said, I'm hoping to make a mini swoon quilt with my leftovers from the designer mystery. Awesome. I haven't done social lights, but I'm thinking about it, said Katie Crafts. HL or Christine said, I'm trying the social lights to first time participating. Social lights would be a good one to just tie it together with a background. I was actually thinking that, uh, Shelly, I needed to look through and see if I actually have enough holly berries left over, but I probably do. There's so much. Okay, here's the top so far. I need to add my borders, almost there. I haven't done it before, but I'd like to do this one for sure, said Marie. Uh, let's see. Sarah Sewing Nook said yes, but I supersized some of the, the Fat Quarter Shop, I'm assuming the socialites. No socialites, but doing the Coriotor, um Oh Happy Day weekly block. I'm doing that one too. I love it. Yes. One came out today. I haven't done it yet, of course, because it just came out today. And, you know, I was busy all day so, until now. So. All right. I don't remember if I cut these to the right size yet. My border strips. Yep, I must have. Okay. I'm gonna get these borders on. 
catch my little cornerstone here first. Linda said, oh, well, thanks, uh, Lori. Linda said, I did social lights last year. It was really fun making the three inch blocks. This year I'm making a mix of three, six, and nine. Cool. Sherry said, I did social lights one as a skill builder and super scrappy. It was almost a free quilt because I used all the fabric and batting for my stash. I just had to buy backing. I made the six and six inch blocks, six and a half inch blocks. Awesome. Sherry said, it was a lot of fun. Rhonda said, cutting now have two grands here. Oh, I'll have fun with the grands. Uh, Sarah said, I have some blocks I need to put together from last year. Awesome. Shelly Hark said, I made a Jen Kingwell quilt with my scraps. Took a long time. Took me six months, but it's so cool. It has a lot of really ugly fabric. Ugly, ugly fabrics in a quilt are just not cut small enough. So true. <laughs> That is a good way to use fabrics that you're not so fond of, cut them really small. Yeah, I looked at the socialites too for this year. Um, last year, the pattern didn't really, I didn't really love it and I kind of love this one. So I might go for it. It sounds like some of you are gonna do it too. So I may go ahead and do it. Uh, Gina, hi Gina said, I started doing the first socialites quilt along. I got about two thirds of the way through it and had to go back to work. Haven't finished it yet. Okay. Yeah, I just definitely need a new needle in here. For sure. After I finish this project, this is getting a new needle. You know, those are like one of those things like rotary cutter blades that I don't change as often as I should. I don't know why we do that to ourselves as quilters. Why we just change them. <laughs> so silly. Okay, now I'm going to put these borders on. Uh, the socialites, I think, starts on Friday. I'm pretty sure she said the 22nd. So I think it's Friday. Don't quote me, though. Uh, let's see. All the blocks are still available on their site. You can download them anytime you want. Uh, Linda said, I didn't use the setting pattern from last year, just sashing around the blocks. Oh, that's kind of cool. Gina said that Kimberly Jolly from Fat Carter Shop said this year's blocks will be the same size as last year. So if you don't like a block, you can go back to last year's and pick one of those. That's neat. Although I saw them, I saw the uh, diagram of the quilt and I, I think I actually like it better than last year. So.
I did notice if you do the largest size um, blocks, you get like a huge quilt. It's like 99 by 99 or something. So I'm debating what size to do. I have found this year that I really, I always shied away from doing little blocks, but I did a, a mini for the fair. Um, it had three inch finished blocks in it. And I really loved doing that, it was fun. Marie said, I agree, Stephanie, this year's is really nice. Yeah, I think it could be good. It helps to cut it all out first. Long time gone, took several days to cut out put in Ziploc bags when I felt like sewing, I just got out a baggie and worked on that block. Eventually it's done. Yeah. I agree with you, Shelly. I've done quilts both ways where I've cut the whole thing out first. Um, and then I've done it where I've kind of cut it out as I go. And I definitely prefer to cut it out up front. Cutting is my least favorite part of the whole quilting process. So, um, if I could get it all done and then just be able to sit down and sew, that's that's always good. Okay. Oops, I didn't iron this one. I didn't iron this one. Last two borders. Okay. Oh, I really like this. This is going to be nice for Christmas on my wall. Okay. One more. Boy, this fabric is fraying a lot. I don't like that. I love the cutting part. It's the binding that I dislike, said Mary. Oh, Christine said, thank you for the sew along. Finished one quadrant, awesome. Have to side off to cook dinner. I hope you have a good dinner. 
Uh, let's see, Sarah said, I supersized my cup of cheer from the sew along from Fat Quarter Shop. I just double the size for cutting. Arthritis and small blocks are no. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, you spell your name like my Sarah. No H, yep, she has no H. <laughs> okay, let me press this. Ooh, I like the way it came out. Yay. I have this um, like candy cane stripe fabric that I'm gonna use for the binding for this. I think that'll be cute. Hi, Mimi. How you doing? Haven't seen you for a while. Good to have you here. Okay. Do threads make you guys crazy? They make me crazy all over my project. <laughs> Trying to pick them all off, but I might have to do this later. This fabric is very thready. All right, there it is. All done. I love it. Can you guys see this in that camera too? <laughs> I love it. It looks awesome. Oh, I can't wait to see yours. Um, if you guys made one and you post it on social media, please tag me so I can see it because else I won't see it. Or you can send me an email picture of it if you don't post on social media, that's fine too. Several of you do that and I love getting those pictures from you guys. So let's see, Mona's here. Hi everyone, had a search and rescue medical training. So just now joining in, we'll download the pattern when I get home. Awesome. I hope you had a good time, Mona. I know you like doing those. This is what the project came out to. I really love it. So this is mine. <laughs> the one behind me is my husband's. He's gonna get that one. And I still got to border his, eh, I'll get to it. <laughs> I uh, didn't have time to finish it before we came live, but um, I'll make his soon. And I'm so happy I got it done. And I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me see. There's like little, these are little trees. Get it close enough where it'll focus. So there's little trees all over this fabric. So it's very wintry, Christmassy. So I love it. Well, that's about all I have. I hope you guys enjoyed sewing this. Thank you so much for coming out. If you didn't sew this with me and hanging out with me, or if you are sewing with me, thank you so much for sewing with me. Um, it was a lot of fun. I love doing these little sew alongs. Um, it helps me get things done. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad to have you here. Um, let me think what's coming up this week. This week will be a UFO video 
maybe a box opening if I get the box that I'm waiting for. Um, what else? Next Saturday, if any of you um, watch Stephen Bland, uh, Bland Designs and the Idiot Quilter is his YouTube channel name. He is having a Zoom retreat that it's free. It's all day Saturday from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You don't have to come all day if you can't, um, but it's free and it's going to be a good time. And he's having some guest uh, lecturers come. One of them is Adam Sows. Another one is a gal who talks about antique quilts. So I think it's going to be really interesting. Last I heard, he just had a very few spots open. If you're interested at all in that, um, go over to his YouTube channel and under, I think, almost every video, he's got his um, email address and you can email him and tell him you want to join in the retreat and he will send you, you know, registration. Um, that's getting, uh, coming up next Saturday. Uh, that goes till five. So I will have Saturdays with Steph, but it's going to be a half hour late till at 530 because I don't want to be rude and like leave. Right. <laughs> um, and then the following week, I will be at Quilt Market in Houston with Yvette. So um, I don't know if I'm going to have anything that weekend. I might have, I'm going to try to record some of the Quilt Market to show you guys. I don't know if I'm going to get it recorded and put up in time, but if I do, it'll be like a premiere video where you guys can watch it with me and talk to me in the chat about what I saw. So I'm excited for that. Um, this is my first time going to Quilt Market. I was supposed to go for the last couple of years, um, but they canceled, you know, the last three or four uh, because of everything going on. And I've just kind of been on the edge of my seat for the last few weeks thinking, okay, is it really going to happen? Is it really going to happen? Well, we're only a couple of weeks out. So <laughs> I think it's going to happen. So I'm really excited for Quilt Market um, and going to Houston. So that will be fun. I've been to Texas many, many times, but I've never been to Houston. So that'll be a new experience. So that'll be lots of fun. So um, yeah, some fun things coming up. And then, like I said, my box will come out for sale, my Christmas box, October 31st. And then look for the announcement for Fort Worth Fabric Studios, So Along. I think that's it. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. I hope you have a nice weekend. Have fun sewing this if you're sewing it and you didn't finish it. And if you post it somewhere, um, I would love to see it. So make sure you tag me Stephanie Stitches so I can see it. All right. Have a good weekend and enjoy today. Sweetest day with your significant other if you've got one. Um, and stay warm. Bye, guys. <laughs>